Okay, our test engine for today is an Atlas RS3. It has an Ekonami decoder by Soundtracks in it, but it works this way with the Digitrax motor decoder, a Soundtrax motor decoder, an NCE motor decoder, a ESU or TCS or any of them that have been out in about the past five years will have CV2 as the bottom, CV5 as the top, and CV6 is the mid-range. So the first thing I do is I set CV2 until when I'm at speed step one, the locomotive is moving. If you look at the video, you can see that I am on speed step two and it's moving. I'll back it down to one. It continues to move. So the default with the Ekonami and the Tsunami 2 is a setting of zero and it will automatically detect whether the motor's moving or not and adjust it. Others do that also, but if you need to get it moving, adjust CV2 up five at a time until you see it crawl like that. Okay? Okay, so the next step is using the speedometer, we're going to set the locomotive speed on the throttle to 50, which is half of its range. <laughs> Technically, it's 49 and a half. But if we do this, we set it to 50, always the same direction. You can run around your layout if you want to. I will back it up and start over just in the interest of saving time. Then we can see where our mid-range speed is. And it's very fast. See that? So we need to slow that down. Now my speedometer circuit has a flashing number if it's going over a speed of 60. So that being said, we're going to slow this thing down. I'm going to make the changes on my throttle, but it could easily be done in JMRI. All right, so I'm going to stop it make the change and come back to the video here in a second. Okay guys, having set CV6 to a value of 80, I'm gonna run the engine back at 50 on the throttle, as in 5-0. That's half of the range. And you'll see our speed is 33.06 scale miles per hour. That's pretty good at a value of 80. I could live with that. However, I'm going to bring the value down to about 75. I'm going to run the train back, and I'll come back in just a second. Okay, guys, I adjusted it to a value of 75. I've got the locomotive coming, and he's running along. I always give it four or five feet to get up to speed because I set my... Um, acceleration to a minimum. You see I'm at 31.15 scale miles per hour. That is as good as you can almost hope for. You could tweak it down one or two if you needed to. Be right back with the next step. Okay, so the next CV change I made on this locomotive is to set CV5, which is the top end again, to a value of 150, which was double what I put in for the mid-range. Not every locomotive is going to be double that, okay? I'm hoping for 65 miles an hour roughly, um, but you can adjust it down. There are some of the older motors that had kind of an odd curve on acceleration, but you, so you may need to adjust that thing way down or way up to get it to be double the speed or the range that you want. So I'm going to run the locomotive through at 99 on my throttle. And we'll see what we get out of it. So we're at 56.98. I would bring that up 4 or 5, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. And that will give you double that range. Okay? So this is a newer decoder. Digitrax, NCE, ESU, TCS, Soundtracks, all of them have 2, 5, and 6. 
you have to ensure that it's enabled in JMRI, and that's a function in CV29. Um, I will try to put the appropriate values in for this in um, the, the show notes, okay? The next engine we're going to do is a little different animal. It's actually uh, an engine I just got from my buddy Norm Wolf, and it has an original Tsunami 1 decoder in it. The only thing the Tsunami 1 covered on the basic speed tab was the startup. So we'll talk about that in a little depth. You'll hear the recording difference because I'll be recording on a different microphone using the PC to show you what you have to do. Okay? Okay, guys. So if you're going to adjust it in JMRI, we've already talked about CV2, 5, and 6. I want to show you where that is on in JMRI. It's actually pretty simple, but you have to follow a couple of important things. So we're going to take a minute and talk about programming on the main, okay? There's a myth out there that you can reprogram all of your locomotives in operations mode. It is a complete myth. It is not possible to do it. Some of the old boosters that substituted as mini command stations had throttles that would throw programming out onto the tracks. Because what it did is it took the main track and turned it into a program track. If your command station slash booster has a separate program track, programming on the main is perfectly safe. So I've got the locomotive we had, 8241. I'm going to go ahead and open it up in JMRI. And you'll see that we have all of our tabs across here. It's found on the basic speed table. Okay. Uh, here's the settings that it had. I set it a little bit higher, but I went back and checked it, and these are okay. They come in just about right. So if you're going to do CV2, this is your V start, it's at zero. Uh, a lot of the decoders, you're going to have to make it five, ten, whatever. Don't panic, it's just how the decoder behaves. The soundtrack decoders sense if the motor's turning or not and automatically adjust. CV6, which is the mid-range, is this one right here. You can either adjust it by moving the slider or you can just select it here and type it in. Okay? So once you've made these changes, you're going to click the right changes on the sheet and it'll put it into your decoder. So as you make these minor adjustments on the mid-range to get it at your 30 miles an hour, or 35 for passenger, okay, then you're, you're done there. So that's the end of this one, and I'm going to talk about some of the older decoders here in a second. So let's get out of this one. Shouldn't need any changes. And I have a locomotive number 102, which is a new one I acquired from my friend Norm Wolf. Okay, selecting locomotive 102, I'm going to full screen it so you can see. If we go to the basic speed control, you'll see that it, I have do not use the basic speed control, but the only setting you have is CV2 here. Okay, so I do these settings over here on the speed table. So you have to enable the speed table by clicking this variable. And again, that's a function of CV29. <coughs> And then you have to do user defined speed table, which is also a function of CV29. And I looked this up earlier, and this setting is 94. But typically, what I do is I set it to 128, which is right in the middle. I then click match ends, and what happens is it takes these and it divides them up and makes them a flat linear curve. Okay? Some of the old motors what you'll end up having to do is you'll have to get the mid-range where it's right and then what you'll find is that the upper end is still way too fast. Um, so they have other curves built in here. They have constant ratio and they have a logarithmic curve which kind of goes like that. Okay, experiment if you need to or if you adjust, if you've got the mid-range where you want it and the top end is too high, you can pull this down and then just kind of bring all the other ones in line with it. 
manually. One more thing you've got to do is if you're going to run an engine in a specific direction, for instance, if you have an ABBA and um, you know that final A unit is going to be running in reverse 95% of the time, then what you would want to do is set it up in reverse. You'll find it won't be a big, big difference, but if there is, and, it, and you know they don't behave well together, you have these trim adjustments right here, and you can adjust the reverse trim or the forward trim until it comes down and lines up with the other one. I have not had any trouble with the 30 plus locomotives I have running them in any direction. Because usually it's only two or three scale miles per hour, which makes almost no difference whatsoever. I would advise you in JMRI to keep a good set of roster entries for your locomotives with uh, accurate names, descriptions, and even have a place here for comments on the engine and comments, you know, if it was a custom paint job. You can store all that information right here and uh, eliminate some paper. But that's for another day. We'll talk more about JMRI. Maybe in a couple of weeks, I'll, I'll dig in a little bit deeper and show you some of the things that we do here at the WDCNP. As always, guys, thanks for taking the time to watch my videos. Again, I apologize for the long time between videos, but I've been relearning a high-end video software. You'll see via the intro and the outro that they're a lot different than they used to be. Thanks again, guys. I hope you all have a great night.